In order to beat diabetes, you have to understand diabetes, and in order to understand diabetes, you must recognize the powerful link that exists between carbohydrates, insulin, weight, and diabetes. Let's talk about that. Today I want to share some thoughts from a relatively old book. It was published in 2010 by Gary Taubes, and it's called Why We Get Fat. Now you might suppose a book that is that old is irrelevant, but I can assure you it is still very relevant. Taubes' conclusions are as correct now as they were when he was writing the book. Now what I'll be talking about really relates more to diabetes than it does getting fat. But being overweight often plays a significant role in diabetes. So who is Gary Taubes? Well, he's not a doctor. He's actually a research journalist. He set out to do a series of articles about nutrition and the chronic diseases of modern society. But by the time he was done, he ended up with more than a few articles. And he wrote a monster 500-page book titled Good Calories, Bad Calories. After five years of research, his conclusion was that the medical experts... The nutritionists, the government, the American Diabetes Association, the American Heart Association, and nearly everybody else had gotten things exactly backwards and completely wrong. Now, one area where they had completely missed it, according to Taubes, had to do with recommending the notorious food pyramid and insisting that we make carbohydrates the majority of our diet and cut that fat in our diets way down to a bare minimum. A second piece of conventional wisdom that he weighed and found wanting was the notion that focusing on calories and energy expenditure was the proper method to lose weight and keep it off. He decided it was not the proper method. Gary Taubes didn't just share some opinions, though. In his large book, he quoted study after study, which demonstrated that our conventional wisdom about what is a healthy diet was so terribly wrong, it was not merely ineffective, it was entirely counterproductive and was making us worse rather than better. After a generation of Americans determining to eat lots of healthy carbs and trim that fat nearly out of their diets and off their plates, our diabetes had nearly tripled, obesity was off the charts, and we were sicker and fatter than ever with more high blood pressure, more cancer, more dementia than at any time in our history. With all of our focus on eating healthy, it just flat out was not working. And Gary Taubes was one of the early few to boldly shout, the emperor has no clothes on. In his book, Why We Get Fat, Taubes addresses the gurus of the low-fat diet and he writes, their beliefs have remained impervious to an ever-growing body of evidence that refutes them and translates into precisely the wrong advice about what to eat and, more important, what not to eat if we want to maintain a healthy weight and live a long and healthy life. In other words, Gary Taub says that all the people who are telling you what is a healthy diet are dead wrong and people are getting fat, sick, and diabetic as a result of following that advice. Taubes concluded there is a different villain in the story, a villain who, until recently, has been largely overlooked. And that villain is excess insulin in our blood, which is the result of us gorging on a largely carbohydrate diet. Insulin forces our bodies to make and store fat, which means that a large plate of macaroni and cheese is going to promote obesity and disease far more than a plate loaded down with a large steak and maybe a salad on the side. Taubes writes, We do not get fat because we overeat. We get fat because the carbohydrates in our diet make us fat. The science tells us that obesity is ultimately the result of a hormonal imbalance, not a caloric one. Now, many people protest that a low-carb, low-starch, no-sugar diet is the new kid on the block, and it's not to be trusted. They suggest we just don't have enough evidence to be able to trust a diet that slashes the carbs and loads up the fat. There are, however, two problems with that argument. First, the idea of eating low-carb and low-starch is not new. It's been recommended for people with weight problems for hundreds of years. 
A British undertaker named William Banting became a nutritional phenomenon in the 1800s when he wrote a pamphlet detailing how to lose weight by focusing on meat and doing away with grains and other starches along with all sugar. As late as 1951, the Children's Memorial Hospital in Chicago published a diet for obese patients which forbade sweets, flour, potatoes, and sugary drinks. In fact, it was considered an established truth for much of our history that sugars and starches were the primary culprits that created obesity. A second reason it's illogical to dismiss a low-carb, high-fat diet out of hand simply because there is, quote, insufficient research, unquote, is that there's already a ton of research which clearly demonstrates that the greatest threat to our health is continually elevated glucose and insulin levels. There is no controversy about this. Whether you're considering the dangers of high blood pressure, the risk of stroke or heart attack, the threat of neuropathy, the possibility of a need for amputations or cancer or dementia, high insulin levels and high glucose levels are the number one, the preeminent bad guys that predict health disasters in your future. And that means whatever you can do to reduce high glucose and high insulin levels, known as insulinemia, by all means do it. Walking around every day with glucose levels in the 200s or 300s or 400s and with raging rivers of insulin coursing through your veins is a ticking time bomb. You may have other issues. You may not be getting enough vitamin C. You may have sore muscles. You may have toe fungus. But worrying about those things while your glucose and insulin levels are sky high is the height of folly. If someone has placed a time bomb in the trunk of your car and you know it, but you worry more about whether you're getting enough vitamin C or D3 or you're so bothered about your yellow greenish toenail that you ignore the thing that's in the back of your trunk, you are by definition out of your mind. Deal with that life-threatening situation first, then worry about the smaller things. In this book, Taubes is more concerned with obesity than he is with diabetes, but even more than obesity, he is concerned about excess insulin as a result of eating a diet with excess carbohydrates. Taubes writes, Everything insulin does works to increase the fat we store and decrease the fat we burn. Insulin works to make us fatter. And this concern with insulin and obesity leads him straight to the macronutrient carbohydrates. Taub says it is carbohydrates that ultimately determine insulin secretion and insulin that drives the accumulation of body fat. Not all of us get fat when we eat carbohydrates, but for those of us who do get fat, the carbohydrates are to blame. The fewer carbohydrates we eat, the leaner we will be. Now, at this point, you may be saying, well, I'm not worried about being overweight. I can handle that. I can live with it. I'm just worried because my doctor tells me I'm diabetic. But, my friend, there is a powerful link between obesity, diabetes, hyperinsulinemia, and carbohydrates. They all fit together. As children and young adults, most of us could eat loads of carbs and still have normal blood sugar and often stay at a reasonable weight. We didn't know what our insulin levels were, and we didn't care. We never gave it a thought. But as we age, our bodies become less and less efficient at processing carbs. We may be able to reach our 50s and still avoid a diagnosis of diabetes. The problem is, in many cases, we're putting on weight. We're putting major stress on our bodies by eating an unnatural amount of carbs, and our overworked pancreas is forced to put out more and more insulin to try to keep us from diabetes. We may require five times as much insulin to keep our glucose close to normal as when we were 21. Our liver grows fat and our pancreatic beta cells start to die, and the cells throughout our body become more and more resistant to insulin and glucose, forcing our pancreas to expel still more and more insulin. Finally, it all breaks down. Insulin resistance becomes so entrenched and formidable that our pancreas cannot keep up. This is when our A1C jumps from 5.7 to 7.5 or worse. The doctor calls us in and tells us with a grave face that we have severe diabetes. As it turns out, the remedy for obesity is the same remedy for diabetes, which is the same remedy for high blood pressure, which is the same remedy for preventing most heart disease. 
and that remedy is to immediately slash the carbohydrates in your diet. Stop overloading your body with carbohydrates and find other foods and combinations that will not spike your blood sugar much. Quit worrying so much about the smaller stuff. Strike at the root of the tree and stop hacking at the little branches. Quit stuffing yourself with bread and potatoes and pasta and donuts and cakes and pies and breakfast cereal and rice. Start focusing upon eating low-carb foods like meat and greens and cream and butter and cheese and nuts and seeds and salads. The day that you determine to make this kind of a change in your diet, guess what? Your insulin levels and your glucose levels will start to retreat and your health will begin to return. In fact, this kind of a dietary change works so fast and so powerfully that if you're taking insulin or diabetic meds, you'll have to be careful. You'll need far less insulin and the meds will soon need to be reduced. So keep in close contact with two people, your doctor and Mike the blood sugar meter. Many people have a hard time getting motivated to lose weight, but when you know you're facing serious diabetes and all kinds of health issues as a result, you'll have a motivation that the Weight Watchers folks often do not have. And when you keep checking with Mike the meter, you're going to find out that you're doing so much better you'll be encouraged and you'll want to stay the course. Of course, you cannot know what your insulin levels are from Mike's tests, but you can be sure that if your glucose levels are going down, there are excellent chances that your insulin levels will be retreating as well. Now, don't get me wrong. Insulin in its proper levels is not a bad guy. We need it every day. But the kind of super high, excessive, over-the-top insulin that comes from gorging on chips and breads and pretzels and bagels and Little Debbie snack cakes and donuts and popcorn and mounds of rice and soft drinks and fruit juices and, well, you know, all the other junk that we love so much. That kind of raging insulin flooding our body day and night is unnatural, unhealthy, and serves as a slow-acting poison to our body. There is a better way. The medical experts were right when they told us how important it is for us to eat a healthy diet. But sadly, many of them were wrong when they tried to define what a healthy diet looks like. It does not involve filling our plates with super sweetened fruit, healthy, quote, whole grain breads, large glasses of orange juice, and making carbohydrates 70% of our diet. Healthy eating is low-carb eating, where crazy glucose spikes are eliminated and our bodies enjoy a season of rest after the torment and abuse that we have put them through during our younger years. And may that season of rest endure until we've finished our days at the end of a long, healthy, happy, and blessed life. Did you ever wonder why YouTubers are always asking you to like, share, and comment? It's not really that we're all egotists and we love to have a lot of positive reinforcement. It's because we know that the YouTube algorithm keeps track of these things and rewards videos that have a lot of viewer interaction by promoting them to other people. So when people go to YouTube, they'll find that video near the top of their feed and in turn, these videos will become more popular still. So if this channel has been a blessing to you, help us out by clicking the thumbs up, making a comment, and sharing it with someone you think might benefit from it. Thank you so much, and God bless you.